Well, welcome back, button lock lovers, to this old sword blade reviews, and this is this old sword with you. Yeah, seems like I've gone down the button lock rat hole here. <laughs> rat hole is probably not a good term. It's a good experience. And um, I have set aside a few other button locks reviewed recently or in the past for comparison. But what this is called is the Concept Made EDC TAC, T-A-C, a design by Mikkel Willemsen. And uh, he's done a number of different designs like the Chibs for, um, I think the Chibs was uh, Concept, might have been another brand, can't recall right now, but there is a review out there on my channel on that one. Uh, he also uh, did the uh, Helix for Concept, that big old blade that's now being offered in somewhat better materials. Initial ones came out in uh, D2 and uh, or maybe K110. Anyway, don't want to ramble on. This is a unique offering and um, I'm going to give you a little bit of a description here. Let's take a look first and then some really nice shred carbon fiber. And uh, we've got titanium over steel liners, which is interesting. We've got an S35VN blade that's stonewashed. Titanium clip. Nice, good amount of jimping here on the liners on the finger side. And great action. Except for my flubby hands here. We have a little bit of a flipper tab that works perfectly. You wouldn't think it would, but there's no effort. And double thumb studs. So let's learn just a little bit about the design and some of the background. I've got an excellent description here, which Blade HQ took from Concept. Couldn't find the Concept one on their page, so here we go. Uh, the Concept EDC Tac Knife is one of Mikkel Willemsen's notorious worldwide knife designer, they say, <laughs> knives. Well-known knife expert has proven his worth as a tactical knife designer among the elite for over 20 years. Uh, designed from a mind that came from Copenhagen, Denmark. The classic tool is meant to add to your home, pocket, or as a gorgeous piece to admire for your collection. Um, and uh, we won't go on and on into the details about the pouch and so on and so forth. But uh, my understanding is, um, having read something earlier from Knife News on this, is that it's sort of a cross between EDC and the tactical. And uh, I'm going to provide you specifications shortly, also from Blade HQ. They seem to be pretty accurate. It is not a large knife. Let's see if I can back out a little bit. So, uh, pretty much just enough to fill my hand. As you know, I'm not a small knife uh, aficionado. I have a few, and they serve their purposes. Uh, what attracted me to this was that it's a button lock, and I seem to be getting into button locks, you know. And uh, it's a unique one in that it's uh, like 3.1 inches in the blade, like a 3-inch cutting edge, flat ground, sharp edge, kind of uh, a nice wedge there, but it's still pretty much a what you'd call... You wouldn't call it a drop point, but uh, it's pretty much a straight spine, uh, upswept belly utility design. So he sort of used that basic utility design, added a swedge, created a button lock. And what I find unique with this one, again, is that it's got independent and exposed steel liners with weight relieving 
So let's uh, get a closer look here with a light. It's usually in my pocket, so sometimes it takes me a moment to get out. It's a little too bright, so let's go about there, yeah. There's the lightning holes, skeletonizing quite a bit of it. And it does make it a light knife. And what we're going to talk about in a little bit is the concept of the plunge lock or the button lock and kind of how it works on various knives because one of my viewers uh, was asking a few questions about a recently reviewed uh, TS313 and that TS313 is a Tucson and that uh, some people were able to defeat the lock uh, by wrapping it in the spine of it on the back of a chair or table but uh, let's go there in a minute or two. Here's a unique tactical feature. What he did as part of the backspacer is incorporate this uh, pyramidal steel glass breaker. Just enough so uh, it will contact a hard object. If it's closed, you stand probably a little better chance of doing that because you've got, you can choke up more and have a lot more of that exposed. So whether it's a impact weapon or whether it's a glass breaker, I think it would work well for both. Really nice detail the way they split off the uh, carbon fiber from the titanium here and how they incorporated steel liners under the titanium scale. So really you got titanium and carbon fiber scales on this knife is how I would describe it. There is a bit of a lanyard hole. So here's some specs for you and then we're going to do some comparisons. I don't want to get too long on this video for one knife either. But I'm going to run through these pretty quickly, and then uh, we're going to put them up on the screen as well. Overall length is a modest uh, 7.43 inches. Blade length 3.1, cutting edge 3.0. Blade width, that is top to bottom, 0.75. I don't usually put these up on the screen. Blade thickness, um, 0.10. And uh, we'll put the calipers on that to give you millimeters in a minute. Uh, it's a flat grind, plain edge. Uh, handle thickness is only half an inch, 0 0.50. Handle material, as I said, is a combo of carbon fiber and titanium. This particular one is a gray carbon fiber. They come in other flavors, blackened and whatnot. It is a right hand and left hand tip up button lock. Uh, designed by Mickel Willemson, considered to be everyday carry knife. So there you have it. Let's do a quick measurement in millimeters on the blade stock. I think everything else is good. Three millimeters. See, I'm bad with conversions. It's a pretty good stock, you know, and pretty good thickness out to the point. Now, it is a plunge lock type of arrangement. And I'm going to see if we can get some light in there. And you can see the amount of movement there. It's pretty significant. And you can see, let me get the light out again. You can see the amount of engagement against the blade. It's about, I'd say, 40% or so, pretty significant. The button is raised pretty well above the surface. And I'm beginning to see the challenge that designers have to go through in order to um, get these button locks to work. They're more complex than you would think. Now, that's the amount of engagement on that one. Now, the question raised by a viewer is on the TS-313 by Night Morning. 
what you can see there, and I'm not saying that this is going to give you trouble, but what you can see is that the engagement there is maybe only 20%. Still locks up extremely tight on the Tucson, but the throw on the button is less. So there was some gossip out there, and I'll call it gossip until it's confirmed, that if you wrap the spine of the blade on something hard, you can defeat that. How having this motion push this over, I'm not sure, unless the spring is loose. And this spring is pretty tight. So let's look at another example of a button lock. This is the Hogue. And this is the, you can correct me if I'm wrong, this is the EX-01. I always get the EX-01 and the EX-03 confused. Um, this was one of the early initial button locks that Hogue put out that's an Allen Elishowitz design. Now, if I open this one up, we also have maybe 40% engagement and you also have a double lock which prevents the button from moving at all well you get a tiny bit but it doesn't get to disengage here's a better look at that hogue it's a nice knife solid g10 handle construction what they call a lava g10 not sure if they call it g mascus or not and Here's another example, if I don't knock the light over. <laughs> Here, of course, is the well-known Mordax, made by Protec, distributed by Drop. You can still get these, I think, for around 240 on Amazon at the Drop store. A lot of people have been asking. They think they've been discontinued, but I have seen them out there recently. The aluminum handle. And let's see what the engagement is on this one. And once again, this is a little less similar to the Tucson in order to get that to unlock. So that's interesting. So someone might say the same thing about the Mordax as they happen to mention about the Tucson. But what I do know is on this uh, knife we're reviewing today, the uh, EDC TAC by Mikkel Willemson and uh, Concept, that we have uh, very good engagement. It's way down in there, which is why my light's not getting in there really well, but showed you earlier. There's a good amount of movement with that button. And still, it's on bearings. They're all on bearings, and you get a great action. This knife will work well in the point down as well as the point up. It's a smaller knife again, but it handles well and there's plenty of blade and plenty of handle there. So um, I certainly wouldn't call it, you know, in the class of, let's say, a wee banter or something like that. It's a good amount larger than that. So uh, running long, but I wanted to show you this. It's a real class act for an EDC tactical knife. Uh, hope you enjoyed the review. Don't forget to give it a like and subscribe. We'll be back soon.